Hi, RJ. I understand you need some information about sleep patterns in outer space. Yeah, I was wondering how you get enough rest with all the critical work and exercise you do. I know my schedule's full. I was wondering what you're learning in space that can help me here on Earth. Those are good questions, RJ. Let me see if I can help you, but first let me explain what we face in space. Astronauts probably experience more disruptions in normal sleep patterns than you do on Earth. The intense work schedule, unusual surroundings, cramped work quarters, stress and excitement of being in space can all make sleep difficult. Since lack of sleep can seriously affect performance on physical and mental tasks, helping astronauts overcome possible troubles with sleeping and getting enough rest is a top priority. In addition, the normal 24-hour pattern of light and dark that provides a time cue to the body's clock here on Earth is absent in space. On orbit, we experience 16 sunrises and sunsets every day, one every 90 minutes. We can't sleep 16 times a day to match the ISS day-night cycle, but beginning about two weeks before shuttle launch, astronauts begin to shift the time they sleep by hour intervals until they are in line with their mission schedule. The ISS schedule can be as much as 10 hours different from what they are used to here on Earth. In addition, shuttle crew members are also exposed to bright indoor lights at specific times. A controlled environment and programmed meal periods help reset their body's internal clock to match the schedule they will follow on their mission. So where do you sleep on the ISS? Well, this is an example of one of the bedrooms on the ISS, and here's one of our sleeping bags. Look, I know that there isn't a lot of space on the ISS, so I can't imagine that you have to sleep in tight quarters. But isn't sleeping on these hard surfaces make it tough? I mean, there's barely any stuffing in these sleeping bags. We don't need stuffing, mattresses, or pillows to sleep on the ISS. One of the wildest sights to see in outer space are astronauts sleeping. If we don't restrain ourselves, everyone just floats. Wow, that is wild. In the ISS, we're floating, so pillows aren't needed, but we use them to protect our heads. Also, since we don't have any restrictions, our hands float up and we could bump into things. So we use sleeping bags in our sleeping compartment to limit our movement. Still, most astronauts report that they actually sleep better while floating because there are no pressure points on their body like you might experience in your bed on Earth. Okay, so how do you deal with your tough schedule when you try to sleep? Sleep is one of our highest priorities. That's why we follow a carefully managed activity plan. We are active for 12 hours out of the day, working, performing experiments, housekeeping, exercising, and preparing meals. Two hours before our sleep time, we make sure we relax and wind down, getting our minds and our bodies prepared for sleep. We all try to sleep for eight hours and then spend two hours in the morning waking up. You know, brushing our teeth, washing up, eating breakfast. It takes about that long for the brain to be fully awake and ready for the rigorous day ahead. Sometimes we have to perform critical activities, such as space walks or docking maneuvers, that require us to be fully awake at a time when we're accustomed to sleeping. To get prepared for these critical events, we once again slowly shift our sleeping and waking times to reset our circadian clock. You know, RJ, there are other factors like temperature, noise, and light exposure that all contribute to how we sleep. Dr. Seisler's work on the color of light holds a lot of promise for us on the ISS and travels beyond. RJ, I hope our talk helped you understand why it's important for astronauts and for you to get enough sleep. It sure has. Thank you. I think this is Dr. Seisler. Maybe he has some suggestions for me. Hello, Dr. Seisler. Hi, RJ. Well, I've reviewed your schedule, and I have some suggestions that might help your situation. You need to be on a schedule more like the astronauts. At your age, you need at least nine hours of sleep. Plus, you need about two hours to wind down before you go to sleep at night, and at least an hour after waking to be fully alert. You also need to spend more time outdoors in the morning under the bright blue sky. Maybe you could walk to school instead of taking the bus. This will not only keep your internal clock in tune with the Earth's day and night cycle, but it will help you to get to sleep better the next night and wake up more easily the following morning. Here is the kind of schedule you might want to try. At 7.30 in the morning, wake up, brush your teeth, wash up, have a good breakfast, and walk to school. From 8.30 to 2.30 is when you're in school. 2.30 to 5 is track practice. 5 to 6 in the evening, you could spend time with your friends. 6 to 6.30 is supper time. 6.30 to 8.30 is for homework and studying. 
8.30 to 9.30 is for winding down, reading quietly, relaxing to your favorite music, quiet time. And then most importantly, from 9.30 at night until 7.30 in the morning is reserved for sleep. Wow, I get a whole hour to hang out with my friends and I can read my comic books while I wind down. This schedule is sweet. Remember, RJ, because this schedule gives you the rest that you need, you'll get much more out of your everyday life, including school and study time. You'll want to follow the same wake and sleep schedule on the weekends, because otherwise it takes several days for your biological clock to reset. Remember, RJ, this schedule is designed for you and not necessarily what others might need. Wow, thanks a lot, Dr. Seisler. And thank you, Dr. Dave. I'll definitely look into what you both recommend. And Jennifer, hopefully this will take care of my problem. Back to you. Okay, RJ, it looks like you got some great suggestions for getting better rest. I hope you use them. And you know, speaking of rest, what suggestions did you and your class come up with for Norbert? So, here's my challenge to you. How can you be at your best? Well, a healthy diet, proper exercise, and of course enough sleep, all work together to enhance your health. Now, what changes can you make to your diet, to your exercise routine, and to your sleeping habits that will allow you to reach for the stars? To help you with this challenge, you might want to watch the NASA Connect program's Better Health, From Space to Earth, and Good Stress. Well, that wraps up another episode of NASA Connect. We'd like to thank everyone who helped make this program possible. So until next time, stay connected to math, science, technology, and NASA. I'll see you then. Goodbye for now. Hi, my name is Mary Sanchez. I work for NASA. I'm also a member of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, or AIAA. AIAA provides classroom activities and mentors for classrooms across the nation. We can help your students learn how math and science are used in everyday life. For more information on how to request a mentor for your classroom, please visit the NASA Connect website. Yo, turn up the ratio. Yo, turn up the ratio. Yo, turn up the ratio. Say turn up. Yo, turn up the ratio. Yo, turn up the ratio. Yo, turn up the ratio. Turn it up. Yo, turn up the ratio. Yo, turn up the ratio. Yo, turn up the ratio. Turn it up. Yo, turn up the ratio. Yo, turn up the ratio. Yo, turn up the ratio. I'm out of rhythm and I'm out of sync. My eyes open last night. I couldn't catch a wink. Seeing my world, you know I'm losing focus. Can't get my head around all. All the hocus pocus, damn, I like to play mad and I gotta pass, yeah. yesterday I fell asleep in class, I'm feeling like I'm unfit.